Investors aren't toying around with Hasbro stock today. We are seeing it push higher after the toy giant announced its E1 film and TV business will be sold to Lionsgate in a $500 million deal. The company also lowered its full-year guidance, blaming the ongoing strike in Hollywood. Hasbro CEO Chris Cox joins me now. Chris, always great to get some time with you here. So I think the big news out of the gate is, in fact, the sale of E1, $500 million. Why did you make the deal now, and where will you spend that money? Well, we've been in a, Brian, first off, thanks for having me. Uh, we've been in a process with E1 for about nine months now. We announced it back in November. Uh, it was just the right thing to do for the company. You know, Hasbro has been become great because of play, um, and we're really refocusing on toys and games. We'll continue to have uh, a great entertainment presence, but when we looked at E1 and we looked at the film and TV division in particular, there was just a lot of brands that uh, we weren't going to make action figures or board games for, and we figured there was a better home for it. Does this deal, Chris, help you save money? Yeah, you know, from a from a high level perspective, we spend about six hundred to seven hundred million dollars a year uh, in film and TV production, uh, of which, you know, from an operating cash flow perspective, we fund about fifty to hundred million of that from Hasbro corporate. So there will be that upside for us. And then the margins inside of the film and TV division, while it's profitable, it's nominal. So it'll be immediately margin accretive to us as well. And then last but not least, you know, based on the proceeds of the sale, we're gonna be able to pay down a minimum of $400 million of debt and accelerate our path to uh, our long-term debt to EBITDA ratio of two to 2.5. Got it. I, I want to make sure the investor uh, base understands this. Is Hasbro out of the content game? Are you still playing? You know, you still have an eye toward bringing some of your biggest franchises to life on a big screen or, or a streaming platform? Oh, for sure. Yeah. I mean, the film and TV division is probably about 85% of our entertainment revenue from last year. We still have huge brands like Peppa Pig, um, a lot of animation efforts. And we have over 30 projects in development uh, across live action and animation, including future movies for Transformers, G.I. Joe, TV shows for D&D, Magic the Gathering, as well as a host of projects uh, for our board games, including a movie that we're developing uh, uh, based on Monopoly with Lionsgate. I think the big pivot for us is, is we're going to be returning to much more of an asset light model where we work with the best and brightest in Hollywood and leverage their distribution platforms and their content creation know-how. Um, and we'll focus on what we do, uh, what we do really well, which is play. Yesterday, Chris, I had, a, I had a chance to catch up with Intel CEO Pat Gelsinger, and his company is also going a, through a transformation. But he said something to me pretty powerful, I think. You know that green shoots in his business that started three months ago are now morphing into plants. I think he meant the turnaround is starting to take shape. Where does your turnaround stand? Oh, I think it's palpably taking shape. You know, we entered the year uh, predicting our first half would be down 20%. After Q1, we said it would be down 16. And after Q2, we're down 12%. Our POS has been prick picking up through the year. Uh, you know, we're still not fully to green, but we're definitely seeing improvements in our toy segment. And our Wizards of the Coast segment continues to be what, in my opinion, one of the best stories in all of games. Uh, you know, we see that segment up minimally uh, high, high single digits this year. Uh, and that's on a track record of, uh, I think we have a five-year kegger of around 13%. So there's a lot to uh, focus on in terms of our turnaround story and in terms of our momentum around it. What's next in your turnaround story? Well, I think for us, it's really for a couple things. On entertainment, we're going towards an asset light model. I think that's gonna save us money. It's gonna raise our margins, which is important for us. I think in toys, it continues to be driving the innovation funnel there, working with our retailers to be the best execution game in town. And then in games, you know, we're a toy and game company, but I really place the emphasis in games. That's an incredibly high margin business for us, a great growth business for us. And I think you're going to see us lean in more and more there. You know, we've got a $2.1 billion game portfolio with a better than 30% operating profit margin. Uh, you know, over the next five to six years, I'd like to see us make some material progress and continuing to grow that and keep that bottom line super healthy. Chris, a lot of uh, your biggest customers, Walmart, Target, you name it, are thinking about what games, what toys they will put on the shelves this holiday season. What are you hearing from them uh, for them right now? Because as we all know, before we know it, we'll be out shopping for gifts again. 
Yeah, well, you're seeing a couple of our favorites right here and some of our uh, our retail partners' favorites. You know, this little guy, Furby, um, he, yeah, we sold out on initial allocations in the first 72 hours. So we think that's going to be a, a toy of the holidays. Uh, we've got some great new Monopoly collaborations. This one's uh, based on Super Mario Brothers, but we did one with NBA Prism, which basically vaporized in the first half of the year. And probably one of the games I'm most looking forward to in the back half of the year is our first collaboration with Mattel on Barbie Monopoly. So taking one of the biggest names in games with one of the biggest names in dolls and really having a nice uh, giftable moment. And then, you know, across the portfolio, whether it's action figures with our hit movie for Transformers Rise of the Beasts or just other new games that we're doing like Twister Air, I think there's a lot of uh, reasons for optimism in the back half for us. Chris, you mentioned the Barbie movie, and, and really it is, it's sucked the air out of a lot of different things, clothing at Gap, at, at fast fashion retailers. I mean, do you think it has sucked the air out of just toys unrelated to the Barbie movie, and, and does that hurt a Hasbro this holiday season? No, I mean, what we're seeing is uh, the toy category is starting to pick up a little bit. You know, uh, RPOS has been positive, uh, especially when you X out kind of exited licenses for the past four or five weeks. You know, Transformers Rise of the Beast, we've had an 83% pickup in point of sale since the release of that movie. Spider-Man, uh, since Across the Spider-Verse, we've had a greater than 100% uh, pickup in point of sales. And then again, you know, we're, we're selling new items like Furby, which retails for around $60, uh, and that's selling out instantaneously. So, you know, I give my congratulations to Mattel. I think they really uh, did a fantastic job with that movie and particularly the marketing campaign around it. And I think if anything, that movie isn't sucking the oxygen out of the category. It's proving how vital the category is and how important the IP is. What movies do you think will drive your business over the next 12 months? I've, I've talked to a couple analysts and I'm starting to hear a, a change in tone uh, in their voice, uh, Chris, regarding potential franchises that may, that may start to drive your business again outside of Transformers. Well, I think Transformers has done a good job and I think we'll have a nice pickup in holiday based on that. Spider-Man uh, Across the Spider-Verse will have another pickup in holiday as well. We're looking forward to a new Avengers movie next year. Uh, we have another Transformers animated movie coming out next year. And then, you know, uh, I think video games is a big moment for us as well. We've got uh, a new video game coming out today from our partners at Larian called Baldur's Gate 3. I mean, that's going to be one of the biggest video game releases of the year on PC and PlayStation. Should be a game of the year contender. And in terms of our D&D &D business, I mean, that's a huge catalyst for that business uh, and an important partner for us that we wish all the best for. Chris, I figure while I have you here, I may just admit to you, I used to collect a couple Furbies. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm all about full disclosure. Oh, nice. Here. Yeah, I might have to get back into it. I see that one continuing to look at me on the screen. Chris, Cro Chris Cox, <laughs> Hasbro CEO, good to see you. I'll talk to you soon.